Friday night is powered by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Stars and Strikes. Get away and play. Chevrolet. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Great deals on furniture. See it. Buy it. Take it home today. Nissan. Innovation that excites. Viasat providing high-speed internet to those outside the cable zone. Call and get connected today. And Jostens, celebrating moments that matter. Now, the leader in local high school football coverage. WJBF Sports brings you Football Friday Night. Hello and welcome to Football Friday Night, Week 12. A little empty. I'm your host, Brendan Robertson, flying solo tonight, but we've still got you covered. Plenty of scores and highlights from around the CSRA. Our final week of the regular season in Georgia and South Carolina. Got some private school playoff games, plus our huge Game Night Live game of the week. Top plays, and if we have time, we'll talk a little college football. Let's jump right in, though. 4A Region 3. Baldwin has the top seed locked up, followed by Burke County. But ARC and Thompson fighting for that number three seed, trying to avoid facing a number one seed in the opening round of the playoffs. Thompson owns a 21 and one record in the series. ARC's only win coming back in 1998. But the Musketeers have shown that they have the playmakers to beat anybody in this region, perhaps. And Thompson coming off probably what is their best game of the year to date, a 30 to 28 loss to Burke County. Opening drive for ARC is going fine until Isaiah Dorsey fumbles it. Clydell White swiping at it, but you can't do that. Knocks it out of bounds. The penalty would kill the drive. ARC forced to punt here. You see the discussion, illegal touching. So we don't normally show punts, but this is good for the brand. Judson Puckett pins Thompson down inside their own 10 yard line. You'll see why that's big in a minute. So Thompson driving, but no D'Amicus Taylor. Remember, he got thrown out of that Burke County game at the end last week. So Tyler Curry in at quarterback. You saw Isaiah Dorsey make the tackle there, and then next play Dorsey again, spying on the QB. So Thompson forced to punt. Their punt only went 15 yards from the 20. So great field position for ARC. Mason Cobb hits Clydell White, the third, for the first down after breaking a few tackles. And from there, it's Israel Dorsey, the other Dorsey on this Musketeer team. Punches then in. ARC up 7-0, but Thompson comes back to win and still owns this series. They get the three seed. They win 20 to 14 the final. We'll stay in 4A Region 3. Told you that Baldwin already had that top seed locked up. Tr Cross Creek taking on Baldwin. Third quarter, 17 0. Baldwin up. Cross Creek. That's Baldwin's Noah Hill. Run to the outside. Good field position. And Baldwin trying to capitalize at one play later. It's Zahir Zalahuddin. I think I got that right. Takes it up the middle. 24 0. Baldwin out in front on this one. And Cross Creek was trying to make something happen here. But Baldwin just too strong. Down the stretch. Appears to be taken out. And here we go. Both players grab each other's face mask right here. This penalty would be on the defense. So first down for Baldwin. Some extra yards. Baldwin's going to capitalize. Therese Hicks runs it in. Dives over the defender. Another Baldwin touchdown. We've had plenty of those tonight. They get the win 31 to nothing. The final. All right, so in 2A Region 4, Jefferson County once again sitting on top. The Warriors a perfect 7-0 in region play after dropping their first two games of the season to Swainsboro and Washington County. The Warriors looking to add to their resume. Taking on Scraven County. Senior night in Jefferson County, and Jaden Jenkins looking to have a big game. Takes it up the middle, avoids the tackle, picks up a first down. Then Jenkins showing off why he is... Easily one of the top players in the CSRA finds an opening, and that's his first touchdown of the night. That made it seven to nothing. Screvin looking to answer back. Ball snap, but it's fumbled and recovered by the Warriors. It's Miles Jackson, and Miles Jackson gone the other way. He had a couple big plays a few weeks ago when we had Screvin's game. So it's 14 0 Jefferson County up. Screvin off to a rough start, but trying to get back a little momentum. Eli Broad next with a run of his own outside. Picks up the first down. Screvin. Trying to score to get back in this. Boyd going to fight his way through for the touchdown. So it's 14-7. Jefferson County out in front. But Jaden Jenkins on a mission. Going for a run again and plows through that Screvin defense. Picks up his third touchdown of the night. Warriors win. They've already locked up the region. It's 35-21 the final. 
So Harlem at West Side looking to stay in the number three seed. Bulldogs' only losses have come against Aquinas, Jefferson County, and Hepzibah. How about A.J. Brown? 187 yards to become Harlem's first 2,000-yard back. Spoiler alert, he'd do it in the first half. First quarter, second drive, Brown scores his first touchdown from two yards out, 7-0 Harlem. Next possession, A.J. takes the handoff, bouncing outside towards your living room. 33-yard touchdown run, Harlem up 14-0. Still in the first, it's A.J. Brown. This time, a 10-yard touchdown as the horn blows to end the quarter. And it's 21-0 Harlem. Second quarter, you guessed it. A.J. Brown takes the handoff and races across the far sideline. A 45-yard touchdown. Harlem up 35-0. But... This is the record breaker. A.J. now in the Wildcat. Keeps it up the middle. Makes one guy miss. An 18-yard gain. That carry puts A.J. Brown over 2,000 yards for the season. Finished with 194 in the night. All in the first half. New all-time leading rusher for Harlem High School. They went big tonight, 50 to nothing in the final. All right, Class 1A, Aquinas 8-1 on the year, 5-1 in the region, but that one loss to Greene County keeping them from playing for the region championship, but an important cross sub-region game tonight to improve their power ranking. Hosting Stratford Academy, these two teams have a little bit of history. Aquinas played Stratford three times in 2015, including the state semifinals. Fourth down, second quarter, Aquinas down 7-0, going for it. J.P. Lambert can't find Cam Brinson, so they turn it over on downs. Stratford trying to add to their lead. Christian Parker, the QB keeper, taking a big hit from Joseph Wells, but he picks up the first down, keeps that drive alive. They converted two third downs in this drive. Palmer keeps it up the middle. Stratford going up 14-0. So Aquinas, one timeout. Need to go 80 yards in two minutes, 10 seconds. Little trickeration. Lambert flips it to Brinson, and he's going downfield. Lots of wind tonight, no matter where you were. That's into the wind. Short to Tyler Evans, but you see the flag for P.I., so keep the drive going. Then Lambert rolling right, throwing with that left arm. And Cam Brinson on the drag route, coming all the way across the field, gets out of bounds. And the Irish drive is still alive. Keep in mind we're doing the two-minute drill here. Irish go back to the air, back to Tyler Evans, back to the referee with another pass interference call for the Irish that was well earned. So this drive is staying in business and they cap it off. Lambert from six yards out. Look at that. Takes a big hit with the shoulder pad. Aquinas makes it 14-7 at the half. They were trailed 17-7. They've come back plenty of times this year but couldn't get it done. They fall 17-14. to Some other scores from 1A Region 7. Warren County over Wilkinson County. And Washington Wilkes falls at home to First Presbyterian. Class 6A, Region 3. This is a big one. Lakeside hosting Heritage for the regular season finale. Panthers slipping to fourth in the region after Greenbrier's win over Alcove last night. Must win to get in the playoffs for Lakeside. Trailing 3-7 to seven in the third quarter. Steve Hibbets and his staff urging the team to turn things around. Special teams, Lakeside sets up the punt. It's a fake John Arneman. Took the direct snap. Then Jaden Taylor going to capitalize on that. Deep down the sideline finds Draquan Jacobs for the big gain. Later on the drive, Panthers facing fourth and goal from the two-yard line. Taylor keeps, follows it in. Lakeside takes the 10-7 lead. Heritage trying to mount a comeback. Ray Joseph looking over the middle. But John Arneman catches his own tip. And that seals the victory for Lakeside. The Panthers heading to the playoffs. They beat Heritage 10-7. The final congrats to Steve Hibbets and his ball club. All right, stick around. We're only a little ways done here on week 12 of Football Friday Night. Coming up next, we'll hit the Palmetto State, plus still got our Game Night Live Game of the Week.